continuing to soil erosion measures just in the previous slide we discussed about you know various uh, control mechanism and uh, if you see that uh, there are also certain uh, you know technologies or techniques that are being used for soil erosion control and very popular in case of watershed management is burned, contour burns and graded burns. So, if you look at this uh, picture, this shows that how actually we use uh, burns and these are commonly used for soil conservation structures. It is generally constructed with the objective to conserve the water and also to restrict or stop the soil erosion is uh, normally suitable for all kind of soil, but heavy clay soil is somehow not suitable for this kind of bund. The basic reason is that that heavy soil, heavy clay soil actually will somehow create water logging problems and we know that why that happens uh, because of the clay soils property. So, majority of the land the slope that are uh, you know in that case that bunds is suitable is uh, less than 6 percent of slope and uh, in case of uh, bonding we will find that there is a increase in filtration by storing water because if water is stored because of this bond then there of course will be you know water infiltration below uh, the ground and that is how it can in also enhance or increase the ground water level. So, there are as I said that in one way that it could uh, you know reduce the soil loss and the other way it can conserve the water, store water and also increase the water infiltration capacity and thus increase the ground water level. Next is contour bond again very useful in certain topology. So, bonding generally is done across the land slope and it follows the contour line. Contour bond you can also see in you know planes also. Normally, you will see that one contour will be made and then in another contour will be uh, made across the contour line. So, like this way you know even in planes you will see that uh, bonding across the land slope normally along the contour lines are being made and these again are used for uh, storing the water for, for a long period of time and also to stop or reduce the soil loss. So, if, if you imagine the slope from these sides to this direction, then you can have this kind of you know contour bonds and along the wind or water flow, if the soil you know tries to go away from the system, then this contour actually help them to store in this in between the contours. So, that is how the stop soil largely remains within the area within the system. So, next comes the, your graded uh, bonds. Graded bonds are again across the land slope, but without following the contour lines. So, this is the you know basic difference between contour bonds and graded bonds. Contour bonds it follow the contour lines. In case of graded bonds, it does not follow the contour lines. These are mainly used for safe removal of or run of water from the agricultural land. And uh, you know often you will find that areas where you know flood is uh, very recurrent and uh, also there is you know lot of you know rice cultivation is being carried out. You will find that graded bonds are often used in those kind of areas. Continue with uh, uh, soil erosion control measures. The next uh, very popular techniques is terraces. I just discussed in couple of slide back also about this. Terraces uh, you know is a continuous series of earth embankment. So, you see here 1, 2 like that and from the you know this picture itself you can very easily understand how terraces actually work. It is normally cutting and filling across the hill slope and it is used mostly in hilly terrain. As you see that here you will uh, you know create a kind of a embankment and the soil that you will find you will you know put here in the next pit here and then again you will have another ridge. So, so what actually it is happened that these ridges, these, these ridges actually allow 
also to store a little bit of water here but certainly you know along the slope if there is you know any chance of soil going uh, down the slope these ridges actually uh, reduce that you know run of loss so it it stores the water here the plants you can grow in this uh, water uh, you know rice can be grown very nicely in this kind of uh, terraces and as i say that banawe in philippines is very famous this picture is from there so this is one of the way that you cut and fill and then you have the ridges you have the little bit of water here so while reducing the erosion along the slope you are actually also storing water and you can grow crop so there is kind of a win win uh, solution that you can get in hilly terrain through terraces so there are two more you know terraces that you can see that often in the in hilly terrain one is graded or channel terrace and another is bench terraces bench terraces couple of slide black i have also showed that how how it looks like there will be a cut and then a little bit of flat land and then you fill it again you cut it and then again you fill it so it goes alternatively and uh, then you see a kind of a bench kind of uh, system where you can actually grow again uh, different types of crop in many you know south asian countries you will find that uh, rice uh, being grown heavily in this kind of terraces so it is clear that in through terraces in hill ecosystem you can uh, reduce the soil loss or erosion and at the same time you can store water and you can also grow crop so this is a wonderful uh, you know technique now next comes gabion structure which is uh, you know little bit you can say that uh, technology is going now from the hilly region it is slowly slowly coming towards the plain and how we handle uh, those kind of soil erosion problem when it comes water flows from the hill towards the plain land gabion you can have actually uh, made of locally available material many places in in madhya pradesh in orissa we have actually implemented this kind of you know boulder and wire mesh type of uh, gabion structure uh, this actually helps uh, the reduce in reducing the speed of the water and thus the you know the flush of water taking the you know good quality top soil uh, from the system it can be actually not totally stopped but at least uh, reduced quite significantly what we do here is that these wire meshes with boulder they have little in between every boulder there is a space like if i can draw it here so you see that uh, there will be some gaps these are the gaps okay so small small gaps in between boulders through that the water can pass through very easily but uh, soil will be somehow uh, will be restricted there and there is a chance that that in this side the other side you will be having a deposition of the soils which otherwise would have gone out of the system so this is an real picture from a field that how you know the gabion has been made using locally available boulder wire mesh and sometimes even you know in areas where resources are very poor community can be asked to use even the you know the roots and the leaves also as a kind of a, a packing material so there are various ways that uh, we can utilize the indigenous materials from the uh, site itself so the types of check dam constructed you know across uh, small streams with practically no subjurgments beyond the stream course you know it's a kind of a uh, gully structure where actually you know gabion uh, works very nicely it is made normally with as i said locally available material excess uh, water overflows uh, over the structure suppose you uh, have this is the structure say this uh, structure can store some water but if the water flow inflow from the top from the mountain or hill is very high the extra water will overflow these things and come on that side so you know this uh, uh, gabion structure also would uh, somehow reduce the chances of flooding in the downstream area some part of the stored water on the other side of the gabion 
can also help in reaching the ground water. So, as I said, this is a porous structure. It does not completely stop the water. Slowly, the water speed goes down. Slowly, it comes in the other side and this can be utilized for irrigation purpose growing crop in the both side of the water stream. So, stream width of this stream, this should be ideally less than uh, 10 meter. So, uh, beyond that probably the amount of you know volume of water uh, will be higher and, and this kind of structure may not be able to withstand uh, the pressure. The height of this structure uh, should be ideally around 0.5 meter, this height okay, 0.5 meter all right. Now, next uh, after gabion we have gully plug another techniques that can be used for controlling erosion and water loss. It is uh, as you see that here that this is the gully, this is the gully which has been plugged by again locally available material boulder stones and as I said that it can be packed also with you know um, root, dry root, dry leaves etc. whatever locally available because certain area you will find that even you know communication or transportation of required material would be very very difficult. So, in that case whatever material is available in situ can be utilized in a smart way uh, to reduce the soil loss. It is useful for soil moisture conservation, it reduces uh, you know the velocity of uh, runoff. Uh, suppose the water is flowing from this side, it will definitely reduce the speed and thus the you know faster way of losing soil from the system. Generally it is constructed with local stones, clay, bushes etc. Uh, generally people uh, you know community can be asked to construct on small gullies or small streams, but definitely for large volume of water it is not uh, suitable, it cannot withstand. Uh, site may be selected such that local you know break in slope it helps and it is adequate for accumulation behind the bonds. It also increases infiltration opportunity you know thus it helps in ground water recharge. No design of trench is required, it uses uh, the existing you know the gully you know drainage pattern. So, you need not to you know worry for designing or doing something extra whatever naturally available uh, in the area this particular you know very indigenous way of having uh, gully plugging will work and it will follow the natural uh, existing trench whatever is there in the, that particular location. It also helps in setting down the sediments of course, it does then the if you water flows on this side definitely it will allow some settling of sediments on the other side. But at times you know if it is um, made in correct manner it may block uh, uh, the passage of fishes which are actually coming with the water. So, sometime it happens is that uh, most of the uh, fishes will be stopped to come pass through this and it will be uh, somewhere here. So, between the boulders uh, or stones if you have a little porous structure then there is a you know always opportunity for water to flow uh, flow in and also along with that fishes will also can come out. So, why it is done the reason behind that if it stops the movement of fish completely then only the people residing in this upstream area will get the benefit. So, that is how you know this is being done, infiltration rate might slow down uh, you know after heavy settling of sediment here and that is why you need uh, a little bit of spaces in between the boulder. Otherwise, you will have heavy sedimentation here upper side and uh, then, then there, will, there will be kind of a uh, reduction of the water flow very significantly. Now, we also will see that in watershed management there are uses or application of brushwood gully plug, then we have loose rock fill gully plug, we have gully plug with sandbags uh, very popular in uh, certain parts of India, then we have uh, log gully plug. As you see that uh, these uh, each one of these uh, requires certain amount of uh, you know design and uh, certain amount of precision uh, for them to work in a perfect manner. Now, if you look at the brushwood uh, gully plug as it shows that there are certain planks that are being used this can be made of you know uh, bamboo in areas where bamboo is easily available otherwise 
uh, wooden planks can be used and this is the way that uh, you pluck the gully. The height uh, of the uh, center plank will be almost around 2 meter. So, you can actually grow also plants and seedlings here on the other side of the gully plank because that not only allows you to anchor the soil but at the same time it also reduces the flow of water, the speed of water and you could also get some useful you know product in that particular area. Some places uh, we see that rice can also be grown on the uh, drainage line on the uh, side of the, this kind of brushwood gully plug. But one thing is important in this kind of system is to see that the height is quite important because that will decide the amount of pressure that is going to fall on this kind of gully plugs. So, we need to keep in mind that how much actually water we will be allowing to uh, store there. So, uh, this height will decide that particular uh, volume of water that will be allowed to store on the other side of the gully plug. And that will also decide you know the longevity or duration of this gully plug once it is made. Now, if you come to loose rock uh, fill gully plug, uh, we just discussed in the previous slide that there is also you know science and engineering is involved. So, ideal condition is that you have a foundation of 0.5 meter, then 1 meter depth of you know your rock filling and then you have again top of 0.5 meter. So, but one uh, important point here as I said that in between the uh, boulder there should be some pore space gaps so that the water from the upstream can slowly pass through uh, these boulders. Otherwise, there will be uh, a different problem as I explained in the previous slides. Gully plug with sandbag are very commonly visible in many parts of India. So, as you see that these bags are also kept in such a manner that in between you have certain number of gaps, certain amount of gaps through which the water will slowly flow from the upstream to the downstream. Then finally, we come here in a log gully plug. Here also you have opportunity to grow uh, you know plants, seedling. This is one step I could say that advanced then um, the brushwood gully plug. Here also we have plank and we have a, a horizontal plank as well as vertical plank and foundation is once again like uh, the previous one 0.5 meter of foundation. Then you have here around 1.5 meter of height and then another 0.5 meter of top region. So, what we do here is that uh, ideally we bind uh, these planks with you know wire. But again here as you see that ideally we should also keep kind of gaps, little gaps in between uh, this plank and this is the space that you leave for the water to flow. So, if there is excess amount of water on, on the other side upstream, then the water will flow over this plug. So, this is how you see that we have different types of uh, measures that we can take for regulating soil erosion. Now, Next is a roadside gutter with check dam. We mentioned a few uh, slides back that this is a very common site in parts of our country. And uh, what we see is that uh, along the road you will find that there is a kind of a you know channels or ditch are formed and those roadside channels also carry huge amount of water you know after heavy rainfall and this takes away a huge amount of soil. Sometimes it actually uh, negatively affect the roads and on the other side of course, it takes away a lot of amount of water and soil with the flow of water. So, here roadside gutter with uh, check dam this kind of system can also be done very easily to reduce the flow of water. Now, we can also see that if you want to go for in a, a bigger scale uh, from you know small village or small community to a large area, then you will see that similar kind of uh, concept can be used in making large check dam you know across a, a very big area of gully bed. 
So here is the you know area where you will have the sedimentation of the soil that will come from upstream to the towards the downstream. But this check dam basically uh, will do the same as we discussed in the previous examples. Rock reinforced wooden check dam is another approach which uh, you know used in various parts of the world. So in the other side they use the planks and then the other side they put rocks. So uh, one way the rocks will reduce the flow of water. If the water flow is uh, very heavy then it will actually overflow and come this side. If the water flow is little less then they will slowly move uh, uh, through the soil and will recharge infiltrate and recharge the ground water. Uh, next comes you know polyacrylamide fiber check dam this is again little advanced and largely uh, visible in you know developed country. So polyacrylic fiber check dam is used again along the slope but the principle is same to reduce the flow or velocity of water allow the water to get stored thus allow infiltration which will result into groundwater recharge. So the principle is same but the way that you actually do different techniques are there it depends on the availability of resources and also manpower and, and primarily decided also by the amount of water a volume of water that, that actually come in particular area or system. Then we have another set of uh, technology or techniques for uh, reducing soil erosion and water loss is permanent gully control structure. These actually are little bit uh, costly and require uh, some investment and uh, largely in our country uh, it is being done under different government uh, schemes or sometimes some private uh, party also comes in to help. Now as you see that uh, we have uh, this kind of structure in some places with a uh, you know head wall and then you have head wall extension on the both side you have side wall and mo mostly made of concrete cut off wall and then you have the apron here. So the water will flow from there from upstream it will store up to this height if the water flow is extra it will come through this and then flow across the apron to the downstream. Till the water volume height is less than this uh, head wall water will be stored here and uh, there is a chance that of course the silt siltation will also take place in this side. Now another uh, way is a shoot spill way uh, which can be seen in again in various parts of, of the world. Now this is also being used in with a similar kind of principle and uh, then you have drop inlet uh, spillway. Now here uh, what we actually do is that we have a uh, small structural dam here and then you uh, stop the water to flow you know directly from this side to the other side. What you do here is that you have a conduit here in the other side because when you have this dam up to this height the water will be stored in the upstream area. So what you do is that you have a conduit here and the water which is stored here because only when the water will be even much higher volume of water and suppose heavy rainfall then the water level will come up and then will cross and go other side. Till this height the water will be stored here. Now in case of conduit uh, what it helps is that this water will pass through from this side to that side. See. So even if the upstream if there is not too much of rainfall or if the volume of water uh, still not you know enough to cross the dam still you can actually pass on the water from the upstream to the downstream through this conduit. This is the idea of having it. Suppose if you have also good agricultural practices here soil quality is good then this could be uh, drop inlet spillway could be one uh, very good way to utilize the water from the upstream to the downstream even when you know the volume of water is not enough to cross the dam and come to the other side.